So I've been using LG's long-awaited 32-inch 4K OLED monitor for the last week or so, and let me go ahead and spoil the rest of this video and let you all know this is quite actually the best gaming monitor I've ever used. This is the LG 32 GS95 UE, which is a bit of a mouthful, and it is now available for pre-order, which I will link down below. And I know this whole video is going to sort of sound fanboyish and a little bit corny, but this is quite actually the type of tech that makes me excited to make YouTube videos, and I want to give a huge thanks to LG for sending this monitor my way a little bit early. Still, it's kind of easy to say we're approaching the end game when it comes down to high performance displays, with this one practically being one of the best of the best. With that though, I'm going to be diving into all the specs, the features, gaming, and why this button here on the bottom pretty much makes this display two in one. And I will say this feature is quite actually significant for me. And I will leave timestamps down below if you do want to jump around within the video, but if you have any questions or two, please leave them down in the comment section. I'll be happy to get back to them over the next couple weeks. Now jumping right in from a build and design standpoint, this model, for me at least, is particularly a massive upgrade in my setup, mainly because of the stand. Now I'm a huge fan of maintaining desk space alongside using desk shelves in my setup, and this updated stand uses far less space compared to the 27 inch model, allowing me to set this on the desk shelf itself or underneath. Still, only extending just under 10 inches or 25 and a half centimeters from the back of my desk, I'm still getting an awesome level of height, tilt, and pivot. And not that it's particularly popular to use a 32 inch display vertically, but you can rotate this thing 90 degrees if you do want to use it, which is pretty sweet. And if you are wondering how far the screen sits from the back of my stand or your desk, it is about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. And surprisingly, this display only weighs just under 20 pounds, so a lot of monitor arms should be fine when it comes down to the weight requirements. Either way, while I am typically team monitor arm when it comes down to putting it a display in my setup this time around, I actually am just going to be using the stand itself because it's great. And when it comes down to cable management, there is a channel here for your cables if you do want to use that. Hint, you should always be cable managing your setups. This is quite simply the easiest way to upgrade your setup. And if you are taking a look at this monitor from an aesthetic standpoint, the front end of this monitor is absolutely near perfect for me with zero branding, super thin bezels, and no chin. I am a wannabe minimalist at times, so this fits right into my setup. On the back end though, this monitor leans more into that gamer aesthetic with a sort of grayish purple color alongside some metallic Ultra Gear branding. One thing I did notice compared to my previous 27 inch 1440p model from LG is that the lighting elements here are actually quite a bit brighter. These colors can be swapped around in the menus as well, which I'll go further into in a bit. Still, it also depends on the ambient lighting in your space. Apart from that, there's this rear facing knob, which will let you hop into your settings and menus, this mystery button, which again, I will touch on shortly. And of course there's the ports. Now what we have here are two HDMI 2.1 ports, which I'll personally be using for my 4K high refresh MacBook dock and my PlayStation 5. For my RTX 4090, Rig, there is the DisplayPort 1.4, which does have DSC. We've also got a hub here with two USB-A ports with upstream if you do want to connect anything through the monitor itself and go through your PC. And lastly, there is the four-pole DTS headphone X jack, which does allow me to plug in either my Cancel U4 speakers or my gaming headset. Now, believe it or not, I won't be using my Cancel U4 speakers connected to the monitor or my PC, mainly because the built-in speaker on this monitor is quite actually insane. I'll touch on that shortly, but first, I do want to talk about how good this display simply looks. I apologize if I sound a little fanboyish because I kind of am this time around. But to rehash some of the display specs, this is a 4K OLED display at 240 or 480 hertz refresh rate and quite actually might be one of the best looking displays you can get right now for media, productivity, and especially gaming. Since this is an OLED panel, you really are going to be getting an insanely nice image with literal blacks and punchy colors. And for the people who do want the nitty gritty on this display, this is a WOLED sub pixel layout with MLA Plus from LG, which is probably why this thing gets so bright. Even this video you're watching right now, I'm not even using a studio light, I'm just using the monitor itself on a white screen to illuminate myself. So yeah, it gets pretty bright. In reality, I don't have a tool to measure the brightness in nits, but LG tells me that this does have a max brightness of 1300 nits with VESA Display HDR True Black 400 certification. Likewise, this monitor does have HDR10 support with 98.5% coverage of the DCI-P3 color gamut. And if you are wondering about reflections and all that, this does have an anti-glare reflective coating, which does a great job at keeping a good image and diffusing reflections. And look, I know a lot of people really, really, really don't like anti-reflective coatings, I get it. But having used this for the last while, honestly, I really truly don't think you'll be disappointed since everything on here still looks incredible. Either way, the viewing angles are good, the saturation and colors are good, the pure blacks are great, and I don't think you'll have any visibility issues in well-lit or dark areas. I'm the king of lamps and light bulbs in my space, so reflections can kill my gaming experience. Speaking of which, this display pairs perfectly with my recently acquired RTX 4090 PC, and honestly, I think it's easy to say we're reaching the end game for displays like I mentioned, and it's hard to see where else you can go from here. 
For myself, I've had the pleasure of jumping into a bunch of different games recently, from first person shooters to adventure to RPGs, and each of them simply look incredible on here. Jumping into my all time favorite game, Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm able to really test out the HDR and performance of this display. It's experiences like this that do really remind me how far tech has come, even in the last couple years. For myself, it comes down to the contrast and the surroundings, the inky blacks, and the all around look of this monitor. Now, I know Baldur's Gate 3 isn't particularly a fast paced game or anything, but it does still look great on here, and it makes me appreciate the 32 inch display size for slower paced games. But what really gets me excited, what actually really gets me pumped up about this monitor is that dual mode. As somebody who legitimately likes to play competitive FPS games, but also prefers all other types of games, I literally sub out my monitors on the daily depending on what I'm doing. If I'm playing my FPS games competitively, like if I'm actually sitting down to try and push rank that day, I'm typically going to sub out my monitor for something smaller around 24 inches and maybe 1080p to get the highest refresh rate as possible. If I'm playing sandbox games or RPGs or whatever else, I'm going to want a large crispy display display that I can really get lost in. The thing about this monitor is that you quite actually have both on one display. And again, I'm sorry for fanboying, but this thing's badass. That mystery button I mentioned before swaps the display from its 4K 240Hz mode to the dual mode 1080p 480Hz mode. Now you might be thinking, 1080p on a 32 inch display, that must look like garbage. Surprisingly, it's actually not that bad, especially if you just push back your monitor a little bit. If you really can't get down with 32 inches, you can resize the 1080p dual mode to 27 or 24 inches, depending on your preference. I will say comparatively, the 24 and 27 inch sizes look a little bit more blurry than the 32 inch 1080p. I think it's because 1080p fits four times perfectly into 4K. I'm not some sort of tech wizard, I am a normal dude, but that's what I think. Not to mention as OLEDs, you're gonna be getting an insane 0.03 millisecond response time. Not that that's particularly perceivable for a lot of people, but I think that's as low as monitors get right now. The thing is, regardless of whatever mode I'm playing on, everything on here is super smooth as it can be because it does have NVIDIA G-Sync support, which pairs perfect with my RTX 4090. Even if you are jumping into an AMD system or say a console like my PlayStation 5, these all still support AMD FreeSync Pro, which you will be getting on this monitor. And speaking of which, even if my PlayStation 5 isn't pushing 240 or 480 hertz, I'm still getting an absolute banger experience on my PS5 since for me, this is where I prefer to play Call of Duty. Plus, I really do love all my Sony exclusives. And of course, since you have those HDMI 2.1 ports, you're still going to be getting that VRR support you love to see on the PS5 or Series X. And the built-in menu here is still one of my favorite LG menu features since you can see your active refresh rate at any given time. For myself, my go-to recently has been playing Ghost of Tsushima, which might actually still be in my top 5 games of all time. This game simply astonishes me on how good it looks. From an HDR standpoint, a graphical standpoint, a narrative standpoint, honestly after a long day playing Ghost of Tsushima on this display is straight up incredible. And what adds to a good gaming experience whether it's competitive or casual or whatever else in between is a good sound system. And legitimately, one of the most impressive things I simply was not expecting on this display is the Pixel Sound speaker. I saw it on the spec sheet, I just was not expecting it to sound as good as it does. What's Pixel Sound? The display is the speaker. I'll say that again. The display is the freaking speaker. Now for the display being a speaker, that wouldn't be all that impressive if it sounded like trash. You would just be ticking a box of a gimmick, but that is not the case here. This actually sounds really, really good. Are they better than my Kanto speakers? No, of course not, but they are good enough that I'd easily remove my Kantos into another setup. For myself, these speakers will stay right where they are since I actually still prefer to use these with my vinyl player while still being able to hear my games through the monitor speaker. And yeah, I actually just wasn't expecting that. I'm both impressed and surprised. Here are a couple sound tests for gaming, music, and cinema. Do you hear this? That's at like 20% loudness. That is pretty freaking sweet. I can't say I'm an audiophile or anything like that, but all those audio tests were around 10 to 20% volume. So yeah, well done LG. Now, obviously when it comes down to media as well, we're gonna be rather spoiled considering how good the display looks, similar to the gaming experience, especially paired with these speakers. The HDR10 support is especially nice for myself since as a creator, I have taken up to studying a lot of cinema, which means I'm legit watching a lot of different scenes from anime, Hollywood movies, indie movies, indie videos on YouTube, and loads in between. For anything animated specifically, the vibrancy is absolutely nuts. The dark grittiness of movies like the Batman on an OLED really do add to the experience. And it's not just games and movies and music and cinema and all that stuff in between because I've been using this monitor as my main work display for the last week. And it's almost ticked all of my boxes. Like you saw before, it gets super bright, which lends itself to when I'm working on my color correction and editing, the 32 inch size pairs super well with my MacBook since Mac has great scaling options as well as Windows. And again, it simply looks great. And I know some people have some issues with text fringing when it comes to OLED panels. And I can't say there's much of that on this display. Here are a couple examples if you do wanna check this out. 
but for myself, I haven't had any issues and the text is super crisp. And of course, naturally, you might be worried about burn-in since this is an OLED panel and all, but personally, having used my LG 27GR95 QE, the 27 inch 1440p model, I had no burn-in on that and I've been using it since day one launch. So yeah, I don't really think it's something you need to worry about, just make sure you're using the tools built in. What I mean by tools are the options found in the monitor menus. And one of those tools here is pixel shifting. What this does is shuffle around the pixels around periodically, so no pixel remains static for too long. The second is obviously using sleep options and letting the display turn off if you haven't done something in a while. The third option here is the dedicated screen refresh, which does run for about 10 minutes. This just keeps the display looking as good as possible. I really don't know what the wizardry behind these functions are, but they've worked well on my 27 inch model, so I have no complaints and no burn-in. Of course, there's other things like having static elements like your taskbar automatically hide. Either way, LG does provide a two year OLED warranty on this display, so just a little bit of peace of mind there. Still, don't be silly, use the menu's built-in tools. I do also wanna mention, since a lot of people who worry about burn-in might worry about heat dissipation and stuff, I'm not sure how this is cooled, whether it's passive or if there's a fan, Pressing my ear against it, I don't hear anything and it's still cool to the touch. I'm gonna ask LG and I will leave an update in the description section once I hear back. But yeah, even under full load, 4K 240 hertz, I don't hear a single thing, which is pretty sweet. But jumping into the rest of the menu here for all the features and stuff, starting with the gaming session, there are a couple pre-made profiles here you can use depending on what sort of games you're playing. If you do need to, you can also adjust your black levels here if you are popping off in FPS games. Otherwise, you can customize your own picture profile, which actually includes six color RGB adjustment. I don't think I've seen six color adjustments in a monitor before, which is pretty sweet. Still, you can always throw on a crosshair or an FPS counter if you do need to. I'm huge into using the crosshairs when playing Call of Duty. Since I am trash and there's a lot of recoil, I definitely need all the help I can get. And I'm not sure why you wouldn't just want to use this at max brightness, but there are three levels here, off, medium, and high. Either way, the monitor gets super bright and I really dig it. Apart from all of that, there are some preset sound profiles you can use, as well as swapping your audio between the DTS headphone X jack and the Pixel sound speaker. And apart from the monitor itself, what are you going to be getting in the box? Of course, you have the power supply, an HDMI 2.1 cable, the DisplayPort 1.4 cable, as well as an upstream cable for that USB hub. Again, cable management, there's this cover for your cables which click right into the back end and you do release it with these buttons on the bottom. Now I've spent an immense amount of time gushing about this display and talking about everything I love about it. So what's missing? For myself, I'm sort of searching for something to complain about, but that's just the lack of type C port on here. I would have loved to see that single cable connection when it comes down to my laptop usage. And I imagine a lot of people might want that as well. For me, I already have this type C dock, which gives me that one cable connection anyways, but I imagine for a lot of laptop users, you might want this right out of box. Now, now with all of this in mind, everything I've talked about, who's this monitor for? Straight truth, just about anybody who wants a sweet monitor that will be future-proofed for the next while. Gaming, work, creation, media, music, whatever, you name it, this thing does pretty much all of it. And again, I apologize for being too excited about this display, but for myself specifically, it just ticks so many boxes that I've been waiting for. Again, the only thing missing that I would have loved to see is that Type-C port, but every single other thing I want is there. It's just hard not to gush about it. Feel free to roast me in the comments about this, but I love it. If you've got a laptop and just want a dope display at 4K high refresh, check. If you're gaming, obviously check. 4K 240, 1080p 480, that's wild. Again, for any of those other people who like to do content creation, absolute check. So it's hard not to gush about it. Either way, for me, it's easy to say at least this will be my daily monitor going forward. It looks sweet, the speakers were shockingly good, and we're just about spoiled. I will have links down below in the video description. And again, I wanna give a huge thanks to LG for sending this out my way a little bit early. If you do have any questions about this monitor, leave them down below in the comment section. If you have multiple questions, feel free to ask. I will be happy to answer them over the next coming weeks. I appreciate you watching till the end. Till next time.